first. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. What is um? So your name is Rodimus. Your the actual name is Rodimus. What does that mean? What's the I guess origin of your name? The origin. Well, it's my father's name, so I was like given the name uh, just to like be a junior. And um, uh, I'm Dominican, so like in DR, it doesn't sound as like strange to introduce yourself as Rodimus than it is here. <laughs> you know, just like culture. It's like okay, that's your name. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, I I can't really ever find like too much like concrete definitions. I found one when I was like, in high school. It was like mm -hmm. Prince turned God, and I think that that was pretty sick. Mm -hmm. So I just held on to that one just because it made me sound cool. You know? uh, <laughs> do you feel that choosing your name also as your stage name has that? Um, do you feel that encapsulates what you want to um, translate to your fan base as an artist? What, like it being like the actual me? Yeah, I think I used to have a lot of stupid like rap names before. Like I used to go by Eclipse for a long time. I used to go by Young Nautic, like a bunch of cool shit. And mm -hmm. then I remember one time I was in like my MC and songwriting class in like UA in my high school. And they were just like, why don't you just stick to your real name? And I was like, where did my dumb hands? Yeah, my, my name's already Radimus, you know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, just ran with it. Now, yeah, definitely. I feel like it got more, more music got more into personal. I started relating, I started speaking more so about what and who I am and what it is that I actually want to stop instead of just like rapping about what other people rap about, mm -hmm. which I was doing kind of before when I started. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So you have, so Righteous is coming up, yeah. hopefully, somewhere, yeah. in, somewhere in the foreseeable future. Somewhere in the very close future, okay. yeah, for sure. Do you want to really say it more? Yeah, I do, I just haven't told anybody. Can you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> It's coming out in April for sure, okay. but I just don't want to tell the date because mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you hit the date. Okay, so you don't just I even, even it being released in April, like, that was kind of like a, a write-up mistake. Like yeah. somebody, like I, I, I guess it didn't specify to not include that part. It was kind of just telling the writers, like, hey, it's really, by the way, it's releasing in April. So, and they like started to include it in the articles, and it's like I never like actually said it's coming out okay. in April. Very got leaked by, by, by mistake. Yeah. You know, but um, no, yeah, I definitely have a date. I just want to make sure I get that shit. Okay, okay. You know. So, Vibe kind of gave you some love um, earlier in January, I believe, with yeah. your single Summer. Mm -hmm. um, which, if Summer is any indication about what Righteous is going to be, I am hyped. Word. So, um, Word. talk to me about the single. Where were you um, when you were writing it? And usually, what is your writing process like? Right. I think Summer, it was like one of the more. One of the last records, like a new, a complete edition, because there's a lot of records that have existed in 2012, 2013, 2014 that get updated now. Like I know, for instance, there's two records for sure. One of them is like the intro record called uh, "God Talks to Me a Lot," um, and that record started in 2013. And then, but the second verse is like this year, so it's like me literally talking to myself also. But then, and I have another record, "Power." The same, a lot of them just get updated over time. But Summer was like more recent and it was just kind of one of those like, you know, you can be a poet, you can try a lot of flows, you can try a lot of sounds, you can have a, sometimes a specific, more of a specific emotion or a specific uh, topic you're speaking about. Mm -hmm. And for Summer, I think it was one of those just more personality records where it's like, I'm not going to tell you everything and then leave nothing for the future, you know, but I'm going to introduce you to at least what. It's, it's important, it's important for the project because it at least introduces where my mindset is kind of birthed from. And I think a lot of my strength and like endurance and I guess just like, you know, this unwillingness to budge because of I have a strict, I have a vision that I have to see through came from like where I'm from, you know, and just like how that influenced me. So yeah, it was really nice, you know, it was really nice. It was really fun making that. And it was really nice like being able to have something that I really personally resonate with. Not even just like, oh, this is just a dope record. Like, now I personally also fuck with it too, you know, for what it stands for, for the trajectory of my career. <laughs> so it's really nice, hell yeah. Uh, I have a video's coming out this week too. Oh, when? So this week. Okay. Yeah. We'll get a date. It's supposed to be the end of the next three days, I think. Okay. Yeah, for sure. All right, we'll definitely keep an eye out for that. In a previous interview with Music in Your Year, you said the Noble Club is like the loose collection of you all. Or, um, so how have these relationships and these brotherhoods that you fostered during your music career, how has it, how has it impacted the way you look at music, the way you approach music? And do you think that it is necessary to kind of create these sort of kinships for your music to flourish? Um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you genuinely fuck with people, um, 
Yeah, especially like just referring a little back to I didn't even answer the second part of your question, like even the writing process. Um, when you have other people who um, like you physically, like you see and you believe in them as well, it kind of like makes you go even that much more harder, you know, because you're also inspired by your peers. And at the same time, not only are you inspired by your peers, but you want them to be as best as they can and as best as you know that they, that they can surpass your own perception of how great they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when it comes to like my writing process, I think more so now, I guess I started becoming much more conscious of that even for myself. Like, yo, how can I surpass even what I think is great? How can I surpass what is considered great or whatever the case may be in hip hop? But it's always good. I mean, it's we're all family. Like, even like you, you speak on some like on a spiritual, universal level. Like, we really are all like family. We're all interconnected no matter what, and our actions are all affecting everyone else's actions. But my energy is gonna affect your energy and vice versa. So I think, um, yeah, I mean. It's definitely good to have kinship, but with them, it wasn't like a conscious choice as far as like we're on the internet searching for each other and then we all met up. Like, we all went to the same high school together. So, mm -hmm. I have what, what Matt was, I'm, no, I'm 10 years in knowing him, you know what I'm saying? Critical in history, I'm nine years in knowing him, you know. So, it's, a, it's kind of one of those things where you just see someone that you uh, appreciate their talents and you see them grow and you guys kind of grow naturally. Mm -hmm. So, going back to uh, Righteous. You and King Critical have a song together called Maintaining, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that going to be on Wretched? Yeah, it's on Wretched. Um, how, um, how long did King Critical, what did King Critical bring to that that you really felt made that track what it is? Um, I put him to the test. Okay. <laughs> In a way, yeah, I think um, he has, he goes through a lot of, well, the public. Um, mm -hmm. They perceive him much more as like a cypher, like bar rapper just because that aspect of him kind of like started going viral and a lot of people were just like, oh, that's the, that's the kid who looks like Biggie and the Cyphers and shit. And I think for me, I mean, not only is maintaining just like a, like a strong, like Righteous for me is like the soundtrack of somebody making it fucking happen. Like that's what Righteous is. It's your own truth and the way you perceive, uh, the way you deal with, you know, acquiring what it is that you believe in. Mm -hmm. And maintaining is one of the, that's like, the, it not, it's not like falling under, it's like, no, like, I have all of this going on, how can I just like just stay just stay zen and just go, you know? Mm -hmm. And maintaining like builds as the song goes and I put critical consciously on the third verse when the beat switches up and it gets like you know, like monstrous and he's like going mm -hmm. up because I wanted to also put him to the test to showcase that he's not only what people want to hear from him. Like right? stop asking him to just rap a hundred bars or whatever, like you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. he's 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 an artist trying to make great music, you know, and I think that I feel like that was also that's like it's like it's like King Critical featuring Radicals, you know, for my project. Even though it's my record and I chose to beat and arranged everything, but it's still like it was, it was important for me to like have him speak the way he did. Yeah. You know? So during the production of Righteous, were there any moments during uh, either you rapper or you being in the studio or you being writing where you kind of like surprised yourself or you did something that you thought you wouldn't ever do? Yeah, every song, okay. every song in a way. Um, every song in a way meaning. Not in the sense of like, oh my God, this is the best thing that's ever existed. It's like, wow, like I'm really trying and it's really coming out. You know, like, wow, um, I didn't know what I was going to do on Thursday. My session is Monday. And by the time Monday comes around in the studio, the session is done. It's like, shit, you came up with that and that a long time. And I don't know, man. It's just, uh, I think I'm, I'm getting I'm getting closer and closer. I think like Miles Davis said, like it takes years for an artist to finally sound like themselves. You know, something mm -hmm. along those lines. And I think it's one of those, like, I've been doing that so much more that I'm just excited to keep creating, you know, because it's just like, wow, I'm, I'm, he I'm hearing my own records, and it's like, yeah, that's really you, bro. Like, you're not sounding like someone else. You're not, you don't hear your, you're starting to not even hear your own influences, that you know influence you, and you're starting to not even hear them, you know. That's just me talking to myself like crazy. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, it's becoming much more personal, so it's really nice. Okay. So, um, so we're we're excited for Righteous. That's coming out. So, uh, yeah, we're. I'm excited for it. <laughs> um, uh, you have a video dropping this week. Um, is there anything else that we should be looking out for from Righteous? Um, what do you want to know? Um, did anybody do anything to um, influence the artist? I mean, aside from maybe introducing you to people, did maybe anything in your schooling or anything um, that NYU exposed you to particularly that like helped make Robin the artist that he is now? Sure, the entire thing. Um, mm -hmm. 
Um, I, uh, it taught me, first of all, it taught me I could do anything. You know, just my, just like, I wasn't supposed to be like, academically prepared to like graduate. First of all, I like, didn't get into NYU. And then to end up like graduating, you know what I mean? Like, and still getting A's, you know what I'm saying? Like, while I'm out, but it taught me, um, it taught me to have mental endurance. It taught me mm -hmm. to not focus on the body sometimes, as far as like, some people have, as soon as their back starts hurting, what came out of the day? It taught me how to get things done that I don't want to get done right now, but I know I need to get done for the future. Mm -hmm. It taught me how to time manage. It taught me how to move with two days with no sleep uh, and still maintain a sharp mind. Um, taught me how to focus yourself even if you don't want to focus, you know, and I think when you, if you can do that towards things that you don't, that don't necessarily make you the happiest, but make you moder moderately happy, what happens when you apply that to something that you love them, you know? Yeah, that's true, that's true. You said before, before we actually got started that you wanted to drop out so much, why? Oh yeah. And why, do you think anyone was getting in the way of your music? I think I was just comparing myself to other people's trajectories of success. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking at myself as a 19 year old and then I see this 19 year old doing something, mm -hmm. 20 year old, damn look at that 20 year old, um, you know. And I didn't have it figured out, I'm happy I didn't. I don't think I ever was anyway, but for a long time I was really frustrated. Um, it started affecting my focus, but I think it was more so that, you know, you start comparing yourself to uh, the way other people are having things happen in their lives, and you start thinking that that has something to do with you, but it, it never does. It hasn't, doesn't have anything to do with you at all, you know? And yeah, I've been appreciating the moments more going forward. I'm only 23 years old, and I'm like, it's fucking old as well, like, out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah, I just take my time and make sure I'm as ready as I can for every moment I present mm -hmm. myself. Okay, so we're going to do like a few rapid fire questions we're just going to throw at you. Um, describe yourself a little word. Confident. Uh, favorite ice cream? Vanilla. Favorite Netflix show? All of them. Would you rather have your earlobes where your eyes are or your eye eyes where your earlobes are? Eyes where my earlobes are. <laughs> Who do you listen to the most now? Roy Woods. Favorite comedian? Dave Chappelle. Uh, what city do you rep? All of them. Um, best concert you've ever been to? Kanye West Easy Store. Most emerging rapper that you admire? Chance the Rapper. Uh, dream collab with any artist dead or alive? Pitching. Um, Earl Sweatshirt and Moody B. Okay.